Hi folks, Dave from Air Park Living. Today we're going to go out and fly an RV6A, that is. Uh, I want to introduce you to my friend Rodney. It's his airplane. He bought it about three months ago. Done a lot of work to the airplane. Um, looked at a lot of airplanes, went through a lot of different pre-buys. Uh, a lot of work when you're buying an exper experimental airplane to try to get one that has uh, good fuselage, good equipment on board that you can work with, and then a lot of room to repair and make it yours. Rodney. Hello. What'd you buy an RV6? Well, um, I just wanted to see what all the hype was about. So, uh, um, you know, I got a few hours in it now and I absolutely love the plane. Um, kind of spinning off what you said, um, you know, we did a couple pre-buys uh, with my AMP mechanic. They didn't go through very well, some damage history on some RVs. And we came across this one. Um, the metal works amazing on it. Uh, low airframe time, low engine time. Um, we did go through it front to back. I mean, it took us a little over a month just to go through the whole aircraft, you know, uh, just to get a good sense of feel where we're at with it and have that sense of security, which is always nice when you're flying. So, uh, so far she hasn't missed a beat. Um, amazing aircraft. I mean, fast. When you're on a budget, you want to go fast, you want a reliable plane. Uh, it's hands down, I think it's one of the best. Well, RVs have got a reputation. They're the most uh, prolific uh, experimental airplane that's built and one of the safest. So. Uh, Enough talk. We're going to get in the airplane. We're going to finish this checkout. We're going to do some stall work, slow flight. And, uh, we'll video some of that and a little bit of anti-spin training today. And uh, just do an awesome slow checkout on the airplane. Just to put it on the, uh, the flight review for you guys. So uh, stay tuned. Let's go fly. Yep, I'm ready. Let's get this baby in the air. Liberty Air Ranch, runway RB6 is departing runway 36. So it'll be uh, southwest departure, Liberty Air Ranch. Right aileron in here, a little crosswind. Sounds good. Good uh, crosswind takeoff technique. Aileron into the wind and off you go. There's free five. She's ready. Bring her on. Get her off this ground. Favorite hey, Air Ranch, uh, Silver Zen Air is departing on 36. Uh, be remaining in the pattern. Hey, yeah. With these uh, trees along the runway, it makes it a lot of rollers coming off of it. Makes it very turbulent when yep. it's a crosswind, which yep. it is most of the time. Let's uh, climb up. Get some cool air going, and yeah. uh, let's do some slow flight and some stalls. Sure. And then I'll uh, I want to check out the airplane a little bit myself, and then uh, possibly teach you a little bit of anti-spin training that I'm been thinking about. All right, when you get here settled at uh, 3,500 feet, let's bring her back to uh, do some slow flight. <clears throat> Bring her down right on the edge of stall. I want you to feel, be able to feel the buffet. Yep, get her in the wind, just to start out with. All right, try to keep her between 60 and 65. Descending just a little bit, so add a little power to hold your altitude. Let's try a left-hand turn to 360. Left-hand turn, 360. Yep. Your left still descending you need to add some power power is going to be your pitch is now controlling your airspeed and your power is controlling your altitude one of the things that's real critical about uh, all phases of flight especially when you get slow is uh, being in trim if you stall when you're in trim very docile but if you're way out of trim it all can be kind of ugly A thermal there. Yeah. I don't want you to be afraid of getting it to the stall buffet, so bring it on back and, and make this thing uh, talk to you. You know, it's nice to be able to feel the airplane talk to you. Sure. Um, you know, it, it's, it's not going to do anything crazy. Those will drop it a buffet a little bit. There you go. 
You can feel a little talking right yep, there. Yep. Add some power. Let's quit descending. Just go ahead and push the power up. Push it on up. Push it on up. Push it on up. And you have to raise your nose a little bit to keep the airplane, the airspeed from climbing. But go ahead and add some more power. Let's climb back up to 3,500. Maintain this airspeed while you're doing it. Add some more power. Let's get about a 500 foot of ready to climb. I'm going to come on the controls with you. Stay on it. I'm just going to demonstrate. I'm going to pull the stick back a little bit. And see, they can go quite vertical on the nose. Look yeah. at that. We're indicating about 50 on this thing. There's a, a buffet. Yeah, yeah. And see, we were in trim, so the nose yeah, just, just dropped. Just straight, straight so down. You yeah. Just immediately, when you release the back pressure, the stall yeah. is gone. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Now, one of the things I want to teach you today is I'm going to I'm going to take the airplane. Yep, aircraft series. Okay. The rudder has massive authority on this airplane even in a stall. Probably the elevator and the rudder are the most uh, effective controls that you have. The worst thing you can do when you stall is make an aileron in a put. That right. will cause a wing to drop. It. Yep. So just you don't want to leave neutral ailerons. Okay, we're almost at altitude. But what I'm going to show you is I'm going to pull the power back to idle, and I'm going to induce a stall. But I'm going to I'm going to do a non-standard thing. I'm going to hold the elevator, and I'm going to use the, the rudder. See the rudder? The rudder is omnipotent at controlling the nose. Now I got I got it really stalled, yeah, so it yeah. really wanted to go. But what I want to demonstrate: Did we rotate? No. You know why we didn't rotate? Because you didn't crank because out the ailerons. No. The, the point that I'm trying to teach you here, and this is what I want you to understand. Just because the wing stalls, the r elevator the, and rudder are still working. The rudder can still correct. Now, as hard as it snapped and wanted to rotate, I jammed smoothly the appropriate amount of rudder, and I, I was looking straight ahead, and I would not let the nose rotate. That's how you keep yourself safe. If you ever get in a situation, you approach to final, wherever whenever and you get a stall and it starts to rotate you push forward stick and you continue to drive with your rudders and do not let the nose rotate sure once you get the nose down and you're not going to spin you will never spin as long as you never quit flying the airplane all right you have the controls aircraft sign yep let's climb back up to 3500 feet yep i'll climb up and do a 180 here so we can stay clear of ocala okay you're clear right clear right so the most important thing I want you to understand is if you ever stall this airplane, forward stick, drive with your pedals. Do not let the nose rotate. When it starts to try to go a direction, you shove the opposite rudder in. Do not let it go. Once you get this thing deeply stalled, it wants to let the heavy part of the airplane come down. And it wants to rotate because one wing is going to stall heavier than the other if you're not perfect. And uh, you can't, you know, high wing airplanes and some other airplanes like the Cherokee, they're so stable, you can go to full up elevator and just control the nose with the rudder and never lose, you just like a falling leaf. This airplane, not quite that forgiving, but the rudder has authority to prevent it from rotating. Unless you get it into a position where you bled off all the airspeed going across the tail at the same time you stalled which that would be extremely nose high, you know, turning type situation or whatever. Sure. All right. Sounds good. Now just power off, bring it back to a full stall. And when it stalls, I want you to look straight ahead and I want you to hold the elevator back, aggravate it a little bit. And when the nose tries to go a direction, push forward stick and keep the nose pointed straight ahead. So aggravate the stall. But see how you control? Yeah, yep, I see you, that. You yeah, see I what gave I'm it saying? Input. Yeah, I saw it drifting to the right. It gave a little bit of left. Try it one more time. Yep. I want you to have confidence that if this thing stalls, you can drive the rudder and not let it rotate. Give yourself time. You'll be able to push the stick forward. Now push the stick forward and drive with the rudder. If you remember that for the rest of your life, right. okay, let's let's go back to normal flight. Sure. If you remember that the rest of your life, you will never get in a spin. 
once it stalls, forward stick. Right. Immediately. Opposite rudder to control. You know, the, when the nose goes, the, if you're keeping the airplane straight, you're going to apply opposite rudder from rotation. Right. I mean, you're flying the airplane. So if you do not stop flying the airplane during a stall, no matter how bad it is, if you're out of trim and it snarls and it kind of flips upside down, forward stick, pick a point straight ahead, drive with your rudder, make the nose straight, and then roll out. Right. But the most important thing is do not quit flying the rudder with your feet. Get forward stick first, right. power off, forward stick, opposite rudder, or drive, keep the nose straight, and you will never spin the airplane. And you'll be like, oh crap, I just stalled it. <laughs> but nothing will happen. Sure. And that's, the, that's the thing I wanted to, to, to point out to you. Oh, it's and, great information, and, yeah. Well, and, and it's, it's very easy. I mean... I mean, the, people are scared of stalls. Well, we aggravated it, and it, it yeah. snapped. But yeah. you were able to control your heading with yep. your pedals the entire time. That's correct. If you're controlling your heading, and you're decreasing your angle of attack to where you're not stalled anymore, the airplane's never going to spin. I, I can't say never. Absolutes are, are not good things to sure. say. But right. the likelihood of it spinning are much reduced. And the videos and the accidents that I've studied where they have... Start the, when as soon as the airplane stalls and starts a rotation, people quit flying. They panic. They just pull full up. They don't worry about trying to stop their rotation with the with the rudder, and becomes a, a fatal accident or an accident. But uh, I just wanted to, to point that out to you. No, oh, that's great information. I appreciate you sharing that. Okay, well, let's do uh, bring it bring it up to uh, cruise power setting. Let's do uh, 270 degrees, 60 bank turns. All right. We're going to do uh, whichever direction you want to go. We'll do one 360-degree bank turn, and then we'll go completely around the gotcha. other side, okay? Yep. All right. Sounds good. Clear to the left. I'll start out doing it left. All right. Let me get it trimmed here. Yeah, I don't see any traffic in the area. Yep. Yep. Altitude is always your friend. You should never cruise anywhere at low altitude unless the ceiling prevents it. But, you know, if the engine quits up here, we've got so many places to go. And land, you could you probably, being here in Florida, find a runway. And there's one right there, mm -hmm. a little grass strip. But anyway, yep. uh, altitude is your friend. All right, I want you to roll out due west right here. All right, rolling out due west. Yeah, and set your altitude back at 4,000 feet. Let's get it squared away. Okay. That was a nice bank turn, but it was only about 45 degrees. Oh, you want to do 60? I'm yeah, sorry. I want to do 60. Okay. I want you to, it's going to be a 2G be turn. 2G turn, yep. Yeah. Remember the other day we did accelerated stalls? Yep. We did them at 60 degree bank. We're not going to do accelerated stall again, but I want you to hold 4,000 feet. I want you to do a 60 degree bank turn. It's not a private pilot type maneuver, but yeah. you're a skilled aviator. This is a, you're talking about okay. doing aerobatics. I want you to do a 60 degree bank turn in trim without losing altitude. Roger that. All right. Area looks clear. All right. Clear right, clear left going to take a lot of up elevator to get the yep. two G's going. I'm going to help you out here. Okay. You got to pull two G's or this is going to descend. Now we're climbing a little bit so then you can adjust it accordingly. I think your nose is a little low. It's going to start a descent. Yep. 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 We hit our wake. Do you feel that? Yep. All right, now roll around, do the other direction. Keep it in trim, you whack the trim right there. There you go. With practice, you'll get used to this airplane. You'll know what, how much rudder to put in with the aileron to keep it in trim when you turn. Looking good, beautiful, very nice. You're flying with a lot lighter control touch today. Yep. That helps a lot, doesn't it? Yes, it does. You know, uh, I'm a former helicopter pilot, so light control touch is all I was ever used to doing. But I guess people that are used to Cessnas get in something like a glass here or this airplane, they go, oh, it's twitchy. Well, it's responsive. It's resp I don't like the word twitchy. Is a helicopter twitchy? No, it's responsive. It's maybe sensitive. Or how about this? It doesn't require a lot of control input to accomplish the task required. So it's just, a, I guess it's just depending on what kind of experience you have. If you've never flown except a Cessna, yeah. well then, the then you slide. only got to move a control stick within a half inch. The best advice I can give you is to always be planning for the engine to quit and know where you're going to go, know what you're going to do. If the engine quits on takeoff, you just got to push the nose over. You almost float it. Just push it over. 
whatever airspeed you've got, you know, get it to 85 to 90, hold 90, and just bring her in. And if you're at the end of the runway, you know, you it takes energy to flare. And when you have flown the airplane enough, you'll know, you'll yep. be able to feel. Yep. The, base, the big thing is, is get the nose down, keep it flying. If you're slow getting the nose down and it starts to stall a wing, just push the stick forward. Don't let the nose rotate with the pedals, and you'll be fine. You're going to be a lot better than the, the, than accepting the stall. But get the airplane wings level and control the uh, the impact. It'll either be a landing or a hard landing. But, you know, the goal is, first goal is to, you know, not hurt the airplane. But yep. if you're running out of runway and it's a field or whatever, uh, or say it's trees at the end of the runway, it's better to get it on the ground and drive between the trees than to be up about 20 feet still trying to land. Oh, certainly. And you'll have to force it down if you've got extra speed, but that's okay. You know, the engine's not turning, you're not going to have a prop strike. Uh, if the nose gear, you know, you just want to get her down, get it on the ground and hold it down. It may bounce, but, you know, it's a non-standard thing. You just got to smoothly do it. Right get, it get it on the ground. Leeward Air Ranch, Red 1 RV6 is left face for runway 36. Touch and go, Leeward. One of the things you might want to consider practicing is uh, flying a traffic pattern close enough to the runway and high enough during the entire pattern that if your engine quits, you still make the runway at any oh, yeah. point. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm setting up a little bit shallower here because of the crosswind. No, uh, I, but I understand. Yeah, I, bet I do do that quite a bit. Yeah, well, There's just, a lot of value to that for sure. Yeah. Well, I mean, we spend a lot of time in uh, traffic patterns, and uh, you, you don't want the engine to quit and crash short of the runway. Yep. And you got a perfectly good runway for you. Smallest movement that you can make is the best movement for your controls. There you go. Let's back a little bit. Oh, got it. Takes you back in. Great airplane. I appreciate all your help. Thank you very much. Well, folks, there you have another episode of uh, Air Park Living. Um, hope you enjoyed the flight with the uh, RV-6A. Rodney's doing a great job. And uh, very uh, very forgiving airplane, great cross country capability. Um, stay tuned to the channel. If you uh, like what you're seeing, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Stay tuned to see my upcoming videos. Got a lot of air parks we're going to visit in the future. Uh, a lot more airplanes that we're going to go out and fly. Um, also got... Occasionally a few maintenance projects and uh, other things. But uh, anyway, thanks for joining me at Air Park Living and Rodney. And the, thanks, Rodney, for right, use of the RV6A. And uh, look forward to uh, next episode.